Hey everyone, welcome to Trail Talk. Uh, I'm Edie coming to you live from the Chuck Wagon Studio here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma. And I know if you tuned in and thought this was going to be the Whiteside Museum of Natural History, well, until this morning, I thought it was going to be two, but <laughs> for various reasons that did not happen today, we hope to have them on again sometime in the future. But it's okay because we have two people who are gonna be on Trail Talk today. And I feel like this is probably going to be um, the perfect time for this to happen. And so, you know what? This is how it was supposed to go anyway, right? That's how we're gonna roll with it. That sounds good to me. Yes, yeah, so this is a friend of mine named Lori Belcher. And Lori works at the Simmons Center here in Duncan. The Simmons Center has kind of a longer name than that, doesn't it? Is it like Simmons well, Center Recreation and yes, Visitor if you, I mean, Convention? There's a lot. Recreation and Convention. Recreation yes. and Convention, okay. But you know, the locals call it just the Simmons Center. That's true. Everybody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> If you go there as often as my family does in a text message, you just put SC mm -hmm. and everybody knows what that means too. Anyway, Lori works at the Simmons Center. Lori, what's your role there? What is your I am name? the program manager at okay. the Simmons Center. Okay. And so like, what does that, is that, that on? That means that I create and run most of the programs there at the Simmons Center. Um, is that any, for recreation and convention I, or? Well, sometimes it goes into convention in that I use that area, but Terry mm -hmm. Knox actually does most of the, in the convention area, a lot of times we're just renting out space. Ah, so okay. when there's something held there, that's the Simmons Center, then it's usually me okay. that, has, that is doing it. Okay. Like we just finished with, um, last Thursday, we had senior games. Southwest Oklahoma senior games right, right. and um, we held it down on the convention end but it was one of the programs that I run now for mm -hmm. that so that looks so. like a really fun thing it really I, is I probably really shouldn't is. say this but I realized that I was of a yes. correct <laughs> age to participate and said senior games just senior chose games. not to but so. It's actually for 50 plus. So. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. See, it's like AARP or something. Yeah. It's not, it's not a, so tell, what happened? What did they do at the senior games? Well, at the senior games, um, we have, um, everybody comes and participates and we play games in the morning. Um, we have opening ceremonies, just like if you went to the Olympics, we have opening just ceremonies. Like if you went to the Olympics. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Some of my seniors that come kind of take it serious, the mm -hmm. games they play. And they're, right. they're very competitive, mm -hmm. but the games are really geared towards um, everyone's athletic ability. So there's some games like we play beach ball, volleyball, and we play um, pickleball, and um, we have darts, and we play croquet, and we play horseshoes. And, oh, um, and so we do that in the morning. And then um, we have lunch and we have someone come and do entertainment during lunch. We give away door prizes. Um, this year, we were very fortunate to have a group from the Douglas Senior Cent Center that came and entertained us. Oh, They're nice. called the Amazing tr uh, Terrific Trio or Amazing Trio, but they were very good and oh. we really enjoyed that. And But we do that do, at lunchtime and then um, in the afternoons, we play bingo, not bingo. Yes, bingo. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes I get bunko and bingo mixed up, <laughs> but we play um, bingo, uh -huh. and so we give out prizes and and they take it very seriously. So, mm. so yeah. um, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, we've been doing it for years at the Simmons Center. Of course, mm -hmm. we didn't get to do it last year yeah. because of everything, yeah. but we were so happy to be able to do it this year. So, wow. but that's already over with. But we will we have it every September. Mm -hmm. So very good. So, so put it on your calendar. You. Yes seniors even those of us who don't plus. want to be called seniors yes. yet yeah very fun so tell us about some things you have coming up well um next weekend we have not this coming weekend but next weekend um we have a craft and vendor show coming mm. up and this is i want to say the 13th annual year for that um it, when we first started it it was outside but we moved it inside mm -hmm. after a few years and kind of separated it from our fall fest 
and it's kind of like a fundraiser for our fall fest that we have oh, coming up okay. in October. Uh -huh. But right now I have about 65 booths that are coming to participate. Wow, that sounds really big. <laughs> they come from all over the area. Of course, we have a lot of local vendors, but we have Lawton, um, Dell City, Oklahoma City, um, Ardmore. I mean, there's a lot of vendors coming and there's anything from homemade crafts to, um, you know, like t-shirts and clothing stores and boutiques that come and do their um, stuff there. And I'm sorry, I'm getting choked like up. Like screen <clears throat> things? Screen printing. Um, but we have, and we have candles and we have mm. um, bath bombs. And I mean, it's all, all these really, and then we have some really cool things that, that I kind of think of as cool. We have damsel in distress that comes and and sells their tasers and <laughs> oh, that um, is, and their pepper I, spray and, ah. and you know it's a it's geared towards women you know right. to protect so them cool. and uh -huh. um, last year I bought a tasers for um, both of my daughters you know I like that my daughter just <clears throat> moved to Washington D.C. yes I feel like good. that might be something she be a great Christmas present wouldn't it? yeah so um, okay. so this is uh, Friday the twenty fourth Saturday the twenty fifth the show will be open Friday from noon to eight. Uh -huh. And then Saturday we open at nine and it'll be from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. So you can come shop, get ready for your Christmas um, buying. You can just get started on that early. Mm -hmm. so wow, that sounds really like a excited fun. About that, that, so. that, I just can't get over 65. I don't know if that's as many as it sounds like. To me, um, last year we had 60, right around 60, which was very unusual because it was 2020. Right. Uh -huh. um, but it was... Like I said, it was in um, the end of September and people were starting to want to get out again. Mm -hmm. So so we really actually had a really good show, but it seems to grow every year. So right. in fact, I'm running out of places to put them. So, but it's on the convention end on the north end of the Simmons mm -hmm. Center and just come and shop and have is a good there, time. Do you, RNS, pay to, um, do you have to pay to come in? No, it okay. is free admission to come in and shop. Um, we charge for the booths for the people that are setting up. Um, we also, but we do have a concession there. Arnest number one drugstore is doing the concession. They've done it for, to, for us the last couple of years. They do a fantastic job. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've ever eaten at their drugstore, their little best egg bacon. salad sandwiches yes. in the world <laughs> so, at RNS. And they bring all favorite. kinds of things and they bring pies. And mm. so come and on your lunch hour and come eat lunch, come back for dinner, come and get something to take home with right, you. Right, so. right. Wow, that sounds great. Yes. What a fun event. I know. It's going to be a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to it. I always look forward to that. So. So uh, once once we get everything set up, I just kind of am there to hang out. Yeah. So right. <laughs> make yeah. sure if anybody has any questions. So so I really enjoy So you've it. already done all the hard part. I've already done all the hard part. I've got some advertising that's coming out um, next week, a lot of ads and, and everything. And I don't know if you noticed the signs. The oh, yes. I, absolutely. And, so. Yeah. So, but like I said, it's a... <laughs> um, event that we use as a fundraiser for our fall fest mm -hmm. that we have at the end of October. So, so at the end of October is October the 30th is when we're having it. We have our carnival, which is from two to six. And, um, and we have games and crafts, photo booth, um, inflatables, all kinds of things for the kids to come and enjoy with their parents. Is that it's, all outdoors? It's all outdoors in our courtyard. Okay. In the, oh, okay. the Simmons Center courtyards mm -hmm. where we've set up for the last couple of years. And um, you can come, it's only $5, an arm bracelet for the kids. And they can come and do the games and jump on the inflatables for right. as many times as they would like to. And something new that we're having here is a kid's spook house. Ooh. So they can also pay $5 for it. Um, we're going to have candy and we have a lot of our um, actors that are going to be in it dressed up like Scooby-Doo and Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. Some of the Disney, what you would call the Disney like Halloween type thing, you know, kind of villains, villains, you know, whatever. so they're going to be dressed up in there and the kids can go through and get candy and everything. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That and then fun. at seven, o'clock from seven to 11 we have our haunted house so we've been doing this for several years 
Um, I don't know if you've been through our haunted house before, but I it's very been scary. Three years. Oh, I this love year. a good scary haunted house. Uh, me oh. not so much, but I enjoy putting <laughs> it together. But this year, it's um, the theme is witches' coven. So, Ooh. so we are uh, getting excited about that. So now, I, if I remember correctly. Did the high school drama department used to, did they help yes. with that? Yes, um, they're not able to do that this year, uh -huh. but we have Comanche drama department oh, very is nice. going to come and help us with it this year. So we're looking forward to that. I might also say that for our carnival every year, the NJHS kids over at the Duck Middle School come over and help us with the games and and with the kids and everything, and they do such a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I put a shout out to, right. to Derek because he runs that and heads mm -hmm. that up for me, and we couldn't do it without them. Right, coming National, and helping that's us National out. Junior Honor Society yes. at the middle school. At the middle school, that's yes. That's great. Those kids, in case you don't know, they, they have to get service hours. Yes. And so this is a way for them to serve the community and earn some of those hours. So. Yes, and they always enjoy it because it's a fun event for them also. Mm -hmm. So they can dress up if they want to. Some of them do mm -hmm. and some of them don't. Yeah, so. listen, if I have a so. chance to dress up, I do it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's my thing. Uh, I get paid to do it around here yeah. sometimes. So. <laughs> That'd be fun. Or, yeah. All right, so you have, so we have, that's my September, two, yes. October. Do you have things on the calendar after that for the fall? Um, we, um, I'm always got something I mean, going on. Right. Um, at the end of this month, the last Wednesday of this month, I believe it's the 29th, if I'm looking at my correct. calendar right, uh -huh. um, we have Lunch Bunch. I do this every, every month. Mm -hmm. And it's a program that I run. It runs from noon to two um, once a month. And I always cook dinner for them. Um, it's $12 and I cook dinner and we always have someone come and speak, which I need to have you come speak sometime. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, and then um, we have someone come speak and, and talk to them about, um, you know, things that are going on around in Duncan mm -hmm. in the community. And, um, and then we stay and play games. Um, just depending on whether you want to play. Sometimes we play dominoes. Sometimes we play sparkles. Sometimes we play cards. Uh, you know, Wahoo, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So they fun. love, they love doing that. Mm -hmm. And it's just a fun time to get out and, and do something. Right. Um, so, and it's usually an older crowd because it's mainly people that can be there from 12 to 2. Right, you know? right. We do have a time. few that just come for lunch and the um, speaker, mm -hmm. and then they leave and don't stay to play games. Mm -hmm. But I have some very competitive ladies in um, that come, that come members of the Simmons Center. But you do not have to be a member of the Simmons Center to participate in any of these things. So. Oh, very nice. That's so. that's really good information to know. So the senior games and yes. the arts and crafts, the fall fest, all of those, that's open to the general public. Correct. The, and the lunch bunch. The lunch bunch is. Um, a lot of our programs that we run, there's usually a member price and a non-member price. Mm -hmm. For lunch bunch, there's not. It's just $12. Um, it's kind of a community event. We like to invite people to come and enjoy it. Um, you know, sometimes this 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 month our speaker is going to be um, Noni um, Brown. She's one of our aquatic instructors, oh, okay. and um, she's going to talk about the benefits of water and um, you know things that you could do. Our aerobic classes that uh -huh. we have in the water, you know, the better on the joints and stuff like that. Right. So. She's coming to talk to him about that. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of fun, but I mean, I could, I know that you don't have very much time, so I, I, I could go on and on. I do want to mention that we have parents night out tomorrow night. If oh. anybody, um, we usually try to do that once a month. Um, it's from five, 5 PM. I'm hoping I'm getting the right dates, 5 PM to, um, 9 PM. Mm -hmm. And, um, you can come and, drop off your kids and we feed them pizza and they get to play in the um, Simmons Center and then we also get to go swimming so oh, nice. so it's it's a nice if you want to go and have a date night with your husband or uh -huh. someone else so is that like a member non-member price thing on that is it members um, only right now it is not um most of the things that we have a member and a non-member price is like our basketball league and our oh, okay. PB basketball league and in our flag football and in summer camps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Something that um, 
that we want to give our members a break on. But Parents Night Out is just a, you know, we want anybody to be able to participate in that. So and so it's a community wide. Yes. Also yes, I believe it's twenty dollars. And like I said, we feed them lunch and snack and not lunch, dinner and a snack, and mm -hmm. um, they get to go swimming and play and just have fun while the parents go out and do something else. Right. So. Right. So that'd be twenty dollars per child. Per or? child. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's that is a great. That's a good deal mm -hmm. though. You yeah. Know, get, been a while since I had to have a babysitter. But <laughs> me too. Me too. Sounds reasonable <laughs> to me. <laughs> well, wow. oh, well, Lori, it sounds like you just. How long have you been uh, at the Simmons Center? I am working on my twenty-first year at the Simmons Center. My I've been goodness, there a while. You have. I've done a little bit of everything. Uh -huh. So, and while I've been there, kind of settled into this program. Yes, this is this is really something that I enjoy doing. Is programs. Mm -hmm. um, um, I do youth and adult and senior programs, and I really do enjoy that. Uh, I used to run the rec sports program, but it's really not my thing. I was just doing it because we needed someone to do it. So I ran the basketball leagues for a while, mm -hmm. um, but now we have somebody wonderful doing that. So, and you know, and I so you you do you have a new um, sports. We do. His Perfect. name is Jordan Mays, Jordan Mays and okay. he's doing a fantastic job. As a matter of fact, he has um, flag football going on right now. Um, he has started um, sign-ups for Pee Wee basketball. That's our pre-K um, through second grade league, mm -hmm. um, which will begin in October or November. I can't remember. It's changed since he has taken uh -huh. it over and I'm right. no longer doing it, but um, that's starting pretty soon and signups are now. Um, I, I do wanna mention something about the Simmons Center because I feel like that some people have a preconceived that only certain people can afford to be members of the Simmons Center. Right. So I would do wanna mention that we also, um, this past summer, I scholarship probably about 38 to 40 kids to come to summer camp. So, um, you know, we have our community spirit program that mm -hmm. we, you know that if you can't afford it and you just have all you have to do is apply for it and you can get a free membership or a scholarship for part of the price being paid for basketball and for um, summer camps and and those things because oh, right um i just wanted the community to, do, to really know that 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 we offer that because we want the simmons center to be available for everyone right and, and I, I think i i i'm sure everyone is really a glad to know that glad to yes. maybe maybe some of us who have not thought about that for a while maybe it's a good reminder yes. that you guys do offer that and it, it is not a you know exclusive kind of yeah. place it really is for everyone i always love the fact that middle schoolers can come over there yes. after school and have a, a place to go. You know, I've always felt like that was just a really great use of the Simmons yes, Center. Yes, I mean, we're right across the street from them. So, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. And um, if they're not a member, they could apply for community spirit or um, this pay a day pass if they want to come over. Um, but we have activities planned for them. Um, we have workers there watching them to make sure the rules are followed and they don't get too out of hand. Right. But, Right. Um, but they use normally have a good time over there, mm -hmm. so they can do their homework, they can, you know, sit and visit with their friends, or they can do one of the activities we have planned. So mm -hmm. it's a great, and for members, it's free, of course. Right. And then, um, if you're a non member, then you either have to membership or pay a day pass or apply for community spirit. Mm -hmm. so, wow, what a great, what a great yeah. way to serve our community. I mean, the Simmons Center has been there for so long, and the facility is just, I mean, it's just such a great yeah. just comprehensive kind of facility you know you guys have everything from the little little kid ball pit climbing tube kind yes. of things mm -hmm. you know to the the different courts mm -hmm. to play games the big basketball courts the pool I mean the pool is big enough to host a high school swimming yes event. And our, our high know. school Duncan high school swim team practices there every day mm -hmm. after school or I think they start really about two or two thirty. Yeah. And yeah. um they hold their meets there, the ones that are home meets there. Um, you know, they go away to some meets also that but yeah, we're so excited. We have a contract with the uh, Duncan Public Schools and 
you know, that allows them to come and use our facility for mm -hmm. like basketball practice and in swim and to swim there um, for the swim team and hold their meets there and um, some other things that, right. that we contract with them throughout the year. Right. So that the school year, so they can do and, that. I mean, you guys even kind of, there was a, like there, there's a tiny uh, set there with the pads on the wall oh, yeah. and the, the big clock. So the competitors mm -hmm. and the, the uh, yeah. people watching spectators can see how fast the kids are swimming. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's very really, professional, very yes. professional. It's, it's a really great uh, mm -hmm. facility for that. I mean, there's just, there are so many things and that's just really the recreation side. Right. That's not even touching the convention side. Oh, that's okay. She is a very important program director at the Simmons Center. And um, of course you would get a phone call. It's quite yes. all right. Of course, no one ever calls me except when I'm <laughs> except when she's on television. Except when I get to tell my phone out. And you were talking about our facility. Um, I wanted to mention that, you know, we have that craft and vendor show coming up uh, next weekend, the 24th and 25th. And a lot of vendors come from out of town and they're always amazed at our facility and how nice it is and what we have to offer. Um, and then I'm amazed at the people in Duncan that hardly ever have come to, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I'm not sure that was proper English, but, um, you know, don't come, you mm -hmm. know, and see what we have to offer and don't realize what we have in Duncan. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just the Simmons Center, because right next door to us is this place. And this is amazing. I mean, every summer I bring my summer kids here mm -hmm. and we have so much fun and they just love coming over here. So, um, and y'all offer such wonderful programs and we're just so thankful that we are right next door to you and mm -hmm. it's available to us too. So, so it's just great to, to have these two facilities here in Duncan. Exactly. And, and I wish that more people would come and take advantage of that because it's such a nice place so, to well, have here in this community. So well said, Lori, well said. I don't think we could have said that better. Well, um, thank you so much. So everything that Lori has shared, the dates and uh, the times and everything, we're going to be sure that we put all of those in the comment section. Thank you. Of this post. So you'll be able to see those right off. Do, do we have a question or something to you? Mm -hmm. or, oh, okay. What do we got here? Just, <laughs> okay. I just put questions. Oh, okay. Lynette and Jamie. Janie. Janie. Janie and Lynette say hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, okay. Lori's got some, uh, she's got a fan club. I got a fan today. club. All right. <laughs> so, um, I will, I will tell you that we also have a website. If you want to go there and see, um, it's www.simmoncenter.com. Um, they can see what we have. We have an ad coming out in the fall edition of the Duncan magazine that's around town. Um, that lists all of our fall and winter events through mm -hmm. the end of the year, because um, we have so many more that just takes too much time to, to tell you about all of them. But um, please come to our craft and vendor show this weekend, do some shopping. Um, Wait, it's, it's not this weekend. It's not this weekend. weekend, September the 24th and 25th. Yeah. I really do not know what day it is. It'll actually. start a week from <laughs> tomorrow, I believe. Yes. Yes, next Friday, the September the 24th and yeah. the 25th, yeah. Saturday also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which that which Duncan is going to be really busy, I believe, because I have a feeling that that's you have your show too. I think you not? is there yours is this weekend? Yeah, his is this, this weekend. weekend. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, those events are great for Duncan. It's great for Duncan's economy. It's great for motels and um, motel tax, you know, it's, right. it's great. It all, it's, yes. it all keeps things rolling it also, here. The businesses, the restaurants, you know, so mm -hmm. all these events that we offer, people coming from out of town to show their crafts and their vendors and come to these shows at the fairgrounds. Um, it's great for Duncan and Duncan's economy. So. Exactly. All right. Lori, what a great spokesperson for the Simmons Center, for Duncan. We appreciate so <laughs> much you coming on. Trail Thank talk you. today. Thank you for inviting me. I'd be happy to come back anytime. Well, I so. will take you up on that. I think that it'd be great to have her on here and uh, share with us some more things you have yes. going on. So I we'll would see, love it. See what kind of great ideas you have coming in 2022. Yes. Okay. So, um, Lori, I'll, I'll let you uh, step out and we're going to have guest number two join us here in just a minute. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Mr. Gerald, you want to come on over here? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. 
Thank you. Bye. So Thanks, Lori. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, okay, guys. So this is Gerald Swanson. And um, I didn't realize until I saw Gerald that he and I have really known each other for a while. Several years. <laughs> Several years. <laughs> that's right. Um, and Gerald is joining us today. As you, I hope you can see his shirt. Uh, this weekend, it is, is it starting today? No, it's, start, it's Saturday. It's just Saturday. Oh, it's just Saturday. Just Saturday. Okay, Saturday is the first annual Rowdy Swanson Memorial Bull Riding. And um, first of all, Gerald, um, tell us about why, why this event is taking place. So, um, Rowdy was actually a uh, bull rider. Uh -huh. Rowdy, your son. My son. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, he went to school at OSU. He was on the, on the rodeo team at OSU. But he had just gotten his um, pro card so he could start going to professional um, rodeos, uh -huh. PRCA. Right. Um, and it had only been gone a few months. But he, um, matter of fact, tomorrow is the one year anniversary of mm. his death. Mm. But he was at a pro rodeo in Mineral Wells, Texas, um, got stepped on and tragically killed from, from the bull riding accident. Mm. So it was our, our idea to put, to, be, to make a scholarship in his honor, um, to help kids get to OSU and rodeo and, and live their dreams just like Rowdy was doing. Right. So that's what we done. So we contacted uh, OSU, got with them after the accident, and they were they they came to us with open arms and said, "Yeah, whatever you want to do." So we set up the scholarship fund. We started selling T-shirts, caps, window decals, um, things like that, and of course we had some other guys that ch uh, chipped in, and we had a, a auction. Is, is this a, this one is of the actually caps? yeah this is actually one of the caps we sold. So this side here is is. Uh, Rowdy's actual signature, signature. Okay. and then this was Rowdy's brand. Okay. Um, so that's where this came from. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we set the scholarship fund up there, started selling these things, just kind of, you know, trying to, you know, make some money for the scholarship, and it grew and grew and grew and grew. We've raised, um, in over a year, we've raised over $40,000. My goodness. So, wow, what, that's yeah. That's very successful. So what that has done is that has actually set up, it's actually not just a scholarship now, it is an endowment mm. at OSU. Um, and it's being used by the rodeo coach up there to help him recruit rough stock riders, bull riders, bareback riders, saddle bronc riders. Mm -hmm. So we actually are getting to do that. We gave the first scholarship just a couple of weeks ago. First one gave, was given out. Um, but my goal is to, to grow that scholarship and that endowment because the more we have in there, the more we can give. Right. The, the more scholarships we can give, the more money we can give. And that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. This is this has nothing to do with anybody except for Adam. I mean, this is exactly what he would want to do. Right. So um, with that being said, with this being the anniversary tomorrow, we thought we would have a bull riding as close to, to, the, to his anniversary as we could. So mm -hmm. that's how this all came about. Um, and it's going to be just a one day event. It's uh -huh. Saturday at, at the Claude Gill, Gill Arena out at the fairgrounds. Okay. It starts at two o'clock. Um, and it, we've, we've already got, well, we've got 33 bull riders coming. So it's going to be a huge event. I was about to ask, I'm not that familiar with bull riding events. Is that a lot? It's, it's for, for a small event like this in a first year. We're, we're completely satisfied with what we've got. Excellent. Now, we're not going to stop. This is the first annual. We want to have the 20th annual in 20 years. Right. Because we don't want his legacy to go away. Exactly. Um, th this story, when this all happened, it went worldwide. I mean, there was, there was news stations in Japan that was actually airing the, about the accident. Really? I mean, it was, it was amazing, the outpouring of people. Um, 1400 people showed up at his funeral i mean it was huge so the kid was loved absolutely and and so we want to we want to continue that for him and his honor mm -hmm. so that's what we're doing and hopefully we raise a lot of money for it every dime that goes into it and or every dime that comes out of it is going to be sent directly to the scholarship fund there will be no money nobody will take any money out of this it will all go there so there's no, there's not prize money. There is prize, there's money, prize money because, okay. of course, that's how you get the bull riders. Right. Um, we we charge the the bull riders a hundred dollar entry fee. Okay. And then 
out of that hundred dollars, we take twenty dollars out, and that's only to pay the stock contractors to bring the bulls. Okay. And then, of course, we do have some expenses. Bullfighters, you know, those guys put their right. life on the line every day. You have to pay them. You've got to get the right guys there to protect the cowboys. So that's what we do. Um, but other than the the minor expenses, everything else will go back to the scholarship fund. Very good. Um, also, um, at eleven o'clock on Saturday morning, uh -huh. from eleven to twelve, um, AJ or AJ Neal and Tyler Thiessen and Koi Oki Thomas, which is the three bullfighters that will be there. They're all professional bullfighters. Uh -huh. um, they are going to be at Crutcher's Western Wear in Duncan signing autographs. Oh, so okay. be a great place to go by and, and see some some big big time bullfighters. Right. And then we're also happy to say that Cody Custer, which is the 1992 PRCA world champion bull rider, uh -huh. is going to also be there to sign autographs with him. Wow. Um, Cody and I, we're, we're really close. Cody actually preached around his funeral. And, say, and we've known him, known him for years because Rowdy actually grew up riding with Cody's boy. Oh, okay. So we've known him for a lot, a lot of years. And he, of course, he's been great to help us and, and do everything that he can for us. He's actually bringing bulls to, to the thing too. So it's that's kind of a neat deal. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we also, at the bull riding at two o'clock, we are also gonna have vendors set up. We've got about 10 vendor booths, um, boutiques, things like that will be set up out there for people to buy things from. And then those vendors have actually donated an item to a silent auction that we're gonna have. Ah. So there's gonna be tons of things to do out there. Wow, it sounds like it. Yeah, we've got about, I'm gonna say probably 60, really 60, 50 or 60 items to auction off at the silent auction, which will just be go buy, you know, mm -hmm. write down your, your bid and then whoever's got the, the highest bid at the end of the auction gets it. And so how long will the auction last? We're going to start it at two o'clock and we'll probably let it, it'll probably run an hour and a half or so. Okay. We figure the bull ride is going to last about two to two and a half hours. Okay. That, that's our goal. Okay. Um, and then we're also going to have some live ac acoustic music out there. Um, and then after the bull riding, we're going to have an after party at Wall Street with that guy that's going to sing, which is Cody Newby and the East Cash Creek Band. They're going to be at Wall Street with the full band and, and, and have an after party there. Okay. So wow. there's lots of things to do on Saturday wow. that, a, that'll benefit the scholarship. What a fun list of things yes. to be a part yeah. of. And you know, and that's, that was my, that was my goal is because we wanted to make this thing something that's, you know, it's family friendly, mm -hmm. but I'll just tell you the one thing, the gate admission, it's only five bucks to get in in advance. Um, you can buy your, your tickets at Crutcher's Western Wear in Duncan or in Lawton. And like I said, it's five bucks. Right. Um, it's seven dollars if you buy at the gate. But we did that because we want people to come out and have, have a good time. And, and we're not trying to make a killing. We're trying to raise money for a scholarship. So mm -hmm. we just want everybody to come have a good time. Right. It'll, it'll be a blast. It will be. I love it that you named it the first annual mm -hmm. because that tells everyone that this isn't just a one and done thing. That's right. The goal is to continue this on. Um, so I want to ask you a couple of questions, okay. Gerald. First of all, um, what was it about bull riding that Rowdy loved so much? You know, it's it's one of those it's one of those deals. People don't people don't understand it, or most people don't understand it. That you know, bull riding's a dangerous act, a dangerous event. Right. But I rode bulls when I was younger. Uh huh. It's just an adrenaline rush. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, jumping out of an airplane, I would never do, I would never do that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's how people that jump out of airplanes, that's a, it's an adrenaline rush for yeah. them and they enjoy yeah. it. Same thing with bull riders. I mean, they, they just enjoy getting on the bull for eight seconds. It's just a rush that you can't, you can't understand. Mm -hmm. But Rowdy was, um, he started riding sheep at four years old and he rode all the way up through, through the high school ranks and then started his college career and then, he was also running uh, PRC, like I mm -hmm. said, but he just, you couldn't make him quit. He loved it. He, it's just, it was his lifestyle. That's what he wanted to do. Right, right. He would rather do that than go, you know, go to the movies and go hang out with his friends or, you know, whatever. He, that's just, that's just what he loved. Mm -hmm. And anyway, we tried to make him quit, you know, as parents, you know, but, you know, it's just. Well, evidently, if he was riding uh, for OSU, 
Now, I don't know, do they have like a college rodeo competitions? Oh, yes, absolutely. And is it like division, like so, NCAA? Yeah, it's, NAI, I mean, I mean, it's in, part of the you know, NCAA. In, that is um, Yeah, amazing. and there's college rodeos all over the United States. And they actually have a college national final rodeo that you can qualify to go to. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's. I mean, so it sounds like Rowdy was a, he was a professional. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And he was very, very talented. It sounds like he was hardworking and really devoted to it. Mm -hmm. And so um, what a great way for a young man who is just has that desire to to participate in that, to be able to go to college sure. and have a, an incentive and a financial help to go, you know, and to study. Yeah. What, what kind of, what was he interested in studying? He was agribusiness. Okay. What, that was his, that uh -huh. was his major. Um, and I'll just tell you what he wanted. This, his goal in life was to go get his degree in agribusiness. And then he either wanted to own his own ranch and raise bucking bulls or own a cattle ranch. A cattle that's ranch. just what he wanted to do. But he just, was, he grew up in the country. Right, I mean, he's a cowboy. He's a cowboy. That's he's right. He's a cowboy. That's so, yeah. yeah, and you know, like I said, he won't, we tried to get him to quit, but you, you just you just got to support your kids when when they want to do something so bad. Right. And he, you know, like I said, he had just gotten his PRCA card, mm -hmm. so he hadn't been going very long, but he was just coming in coming into his own, and he was really riding good. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just an unfortunate accident, right. you know, and it happens, right. you know. But I'm telling you, the boy was something special. Yeah. I mean, he was my kid, but he was something special. Well, it, I mean, it sounds like yeah. it. And honestly, Gerald, I love it so much that you've taken um, something that you would have never, ever dreamed of happening in your life and made it into something special for who knows how many young people, how, what a positive impact your, these act, the, the way you're handling, um, Rowdy's death and, and the way you're taking it and investing your loss into a game for who knows how many. That's right. Who knows how many young people are going to benefit in the years to come sure. because of Rowdy Swanson. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's the one thing that I tell everybody. I, I spent the last few months, I've spent every waking moment trying to figure out the best way, best way to do this. What, what can I do to, to help this? Because this is not about me. Right. I don't, if somebody else wanted to go do it, fine. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I, it's not about me. It's about him. Mm -hmm. It's about raising money for that scholarship and helping other kids. And, and something that's really interesting is um, Rowdy had a, a good friend that he rode bulls with for several years. And he's a local, well, he's kind of local. He's from Geronimo Walters area. Mm -hmm. But Rowdy talked him into coming to OSU. He's a bull rider. And so he ended up going to Stillwater last year and started riding some with the rodeo team. But um, just about three weeks ago, we actually gave that first scholarship to him. Oh, wow. So it was, wow. it was I mean, it was fitting. I exactly. mean, this kid, exactly. Rowdy and him run around together. This kid, Rowdy was kind of a part of getting him to OSU. And so he got the first scholarship and he will be at the bull riding this weekend to ride. Wow. And I wish him the best of luck. Exactly. Exactly. That's, but it's, it, that's amazing. It, it is great. And I'm just going to tell you too, you know, it's like, it's like she said a while ago about the Simmons Center. This community is amazing mm -hmm. because we've raised so much money, sponsor money to help us pay for this event that it's not going to, it's not going to, we're not spending anything out of our pocket. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tilly Trucking, Tilly Pressure Test, Crutcher's Western Wear, um, Edgewood Convenience Store, Chisholm Corners. The, all of these people have just come to me and said, we want, we want to sponsor. We want to donate money to help you get this going. So it, this community has been amazing, amazing helping us get this going. Wow. I just, I love, I love hearing that. Listen, if you're watching and you're from Duncan, then you know, you know what Gerald is talking about. And if you're watching and you're not from Duncan, believe us whenever we say that our community really rallies around each other sure. and we we support each other and um you know if you're around this weekend go mm. out to the fairgrounds on saturday and support this very worthy cause i mean i just i'm i'm so amazed that it's 
your, um, your efforts have already reached the endowment stage. Because if you know anything about monies that organizations use, uh, big organizations mm -hmm. like, you know, like universities, endowments are the, that's, that's the only yeah. way to go. Yeah, because if it's just a scholarship, I mean, they, they, once the money's gone, the money's gone. But these yeah. endowments, they invest the money. I mean, oh, they're only using the, the, the interest. Uh, the interest. Yeah, off of the, the principal. Off of the principal that's, just it keeps, stays there and keeps growing. growing. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the good thing. But I will tell you this too. Um, if you're not a bull riding fan, if you're not a rodeo fan, um, we have two other attractions coming this weekend. Oh, okay. Let's hear so about this is those. something that this is something for everybody to come see, and this is something very special. So Bullet which if you don't know who Bullet is, he's the black horse that they run out on the field at the OSU football games. Uh -huh. Bullet will be making an appearance at the, at the bull ride. Oh, wow. With the spirit riders, which is the girls that ride him out on the field. Uh -huh. um, they will be there for a meet and greet from one o'clock until shortly after the bull riding starts because they have another engagement after, so they have to leave after the bull riding starts. But they will be there from one until probably 2.15 or 2.30 to sign autographs, take pictures. You can meet Bullet. Um, Bullet will actually be carrying the American flag into the arena at the beginning for the, for the awesome. Star Spangled Banner. And then Pistol Pete's going to be there. Pistol Pete's coming. <laughs> I just got the phone call yesterday afternoon. I was on my way over to Channel 7 for an interview, and they called me and they said, we'll be there. Oh, so man. That is so cool. If, if that doesn't bring you to the fairgrounds this weekend, if the bull riding doesn't bring you, that should bring there you just you to come go. see that. I mean, five dollars to come in and see Pistol Pete and see Bullet. I that mean, is exactly those are right. those are big things. You know? Oh man, that so, is so cool. Yep. Yeah, so we're excited about that. Yeah, you know, there a Pistol Pete in the past was from Duncan. Yes, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 And as a matter of fact, um, Pistol Pete actually showed up at his funeral. Did he really? He did. He I, did. I know. Pistol, his respects. Pistol Pete does all kinds of great yes. things like that yeah. that is so cool so those those are two attractions that yeah if you don't come want to come for the bull ride and just come for that that is and then like i said spend money at the concession spend money at the at the vendors mm -hmm. um the silent auction it's all going to a great cause right it's all going to a great cause right now uh, something just popped in my head this is a little bit um di little different trail but so for someone to become an accomplished bull rider besides the you know constant practice I'm sure um, what what are some of the what are some of the workouts or the, I'm I know that these guys have to be physically fit sure they're athletes you know right I mean, they have to stay in shape yeah um the, they hit the gym every day I mean and, and I'll tell you that's one thing about Rowdy when he was younger I I, I told him all the time son you got to get in the gym and you know kids they don't want to do that yeah. they want to go out yeah. there and play football they want to go out there and ride bulls they don't want to practice they don't yeah. want to you know lift weights but i told him i said son if you're going to do this you've got you've got to get in shape and you've mm -hmm. got to really work at this and up until he got to college he had never really done that but when he got to osu they told him you got to get in the gym and he was religious mm -hmm. about going to the gym mm -hmm. um, and i think that's probably what turned his career around i right. mean like i said he, he that, that's what you got to do. It, mm -hmm. it put, you got to put a lot of work into it. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's pretty much what they do. I mean, gym, swimming, I mean, all, all of those things just to stay in shape, you know, right. get your cardio up. People don't think that bull riding, you know, you're only there for eight seconds, but hey, you're facing a 2,000 pound animal and you're 150, 160 pounds. Right. You better be in shape and you better be strong. That's right. Because if you fall off, mm -hmm. well, even if you don't fall off, I mean, you're, you're going to fall on the ground. Exactly. Very rarely do they even, after the time is up, are they able to just dismount right. on their feet? Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, it really, it, it's a, it's, there's a lot of um, just physical abuse, you know, sure. and if you're not rock solid, it's going to take its toll on you. Yeah. So. And, you know, Rowdy was, Rowdy was one of those kids growing up. He was actually trouble when it comes to bull riding. I mean, he was hurt a lot, mm -hmm. but a bull rider's mentality is a, little, is a lot different than most people's mentality because I can tell you when he was about, I'm going to say probably 10 or 12 years old, um, I can remember we were at Vernon, Texas. I remember it like it was yesterday. He got bucked off and his vest got ripped off of him. And we, we ended up taking him to the hospital in ambulance and we get him there and he's laying there. And he's got busted up ribs. I mean, he's hurt. Right. But he's sitting there laughing. I mean, he's just... 
And he tells me, Dad, I got to get out of here. We got a rodeo next weekend. And I'm like, son, you can't do that. But that's just how a bull rider thinks. I, yeah. I'll tell you another story. When he was four <laughs> years old, we was at a rodeo in Winnie Wood. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, he, uh, it, we were, he was, sheep was running down the arena and flipped head, end over end. And Rowdy tried to catch himself with his arm. Well, when he did, he broke his arm. And so we bring him back to Duncan to the ER and we take him in. They had trade it's broke. They cast it or didn't cast it, but split it. Mm -hmm. and that was Saturday. And he says, dad, we got a rodeo tomorrow too. I said, son, you can't do that. He said, dad, we got a rodeo tomorrow. So guess what we did? As bad parents as we are, we haul him back to Winniewood the next day and he wins the sheep ride. Right. I mean, you know, it's just a bull ride mentality. Right. That's exactly. what you do. You got to keep going. Exactly. You know? Right. So, he was doing exactly what he was right. supposed to do. That's exactly right. Yeah. And he told he told two of his friends the week the week two weeks before the pass his passing and then the weekend after or before his the weekend before he uh, he told two of his buddies that if he died riding bulls he died happy. So. Wow. You know, yeah. he left this world doing what he loved. Right. And, and and most people can't say that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they can't. I mean, it's car wrecks, sickness, or things like that. But yeah. he was doing exactly what he loved. Right. So right. We, we know where he's at. Mm -hmm. He's looking down on us. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Well. It's still hard every day, no doubt. Absolutely. And I'm, I am sure that this weekend is fulfilling and everything is it gonna, it's going to be. It, it will be emotional. Sure. You, you guys will be emotionally wrung out by Absolutely. the time it's all um, done. But I just, I just am just envisioning all the greatness that's going to come from all of this. And um, just, wow, well done. Yeah, and, and I know you're saying it's not about you. It's not. Uh, but um, well done anyway, Thank Gerald, you. Thank because you. And I'll this just, is a good thing. You know, and I mentioned it a while ago, too, about the businesses in town. But I also have to say that, you know, I've got I've got a great support group behind me. Um, Rowdy's um, fiance, it, her family, we still stay in contact. They're actually helping us. Um, they're from Frederick, but they're coming over to help with the with the working at the bull ride and putting she's actually taking care of all the vendor booths and the silent auction. Rowdy's mom's taking care of the concession stand. I mean, we've got people that are support a support group that's that's standing behind us and helping right. us with this deal. So right. it's it's not it's not about me. I've kind of been the spokesperson because I've been kind of putting the bull riding on because that's my life. That's what I always done. Uh -huh. So I kind of know that aspect of it, but I I dilly out the rest of it to other people. So you know, because because I had to have help. There's no way. I could oh no. No, huge, no, no, Huge support group, but those people have been great. Mm -hmm. Well, that that is awesome. Yeah. I mean, this is a this is very exciting, and I mean, let's make it worth worth the effort sure uh, you know i i sounds like 33 bull riders how many so do you have to have that many bulls yeah we we're gonna have 42 bulls at the fairgrounds this weekend wow yeah because yeah, you have to have one for each cowboy yeah. I mean, you, you, we, you, they, those stock contractors don't buck them but one time and that's it because those, those those bulls are athletes too true you got to take care of them and so you you buck them one time and then that's it so yeah we'll have 42 42 head of bulls down there um and some of those will be local bulls. Um, Dwight Frick's bringing some of his. Mike Summers is bringing some of his. And then some of the guys are from off um, Stillwater area. So, yeah, we've, we think we've got six, five or six stock contractors. Wow. So, but yeah, it's going to be. That just occurred to me. Yeah. How, as many riders as you have, you got to have that many bulls yeah. too. Matter of fact, that's what I'll be doing tomorrow. I'll be at the fairgrounds all day getting pins set up because they don't have enough room down there. But they're, they're accommodating us and we're gonna, they're going to help us get it fixed up where we got enough pins for all of them. And it's good i mean so again, in in reality whenever you have a big bull riding event it's probably having places for all of those bulls that's the biggest yeah it's that's a, what makes the makes it so big yeah and it's a logistical nightmare oh yeah because you know you've got six different stock contractors being bringing, bringing bulls in well you don't want hit one stock contractor's bulls being pinned with another stock contractor's bulls because those bulls have never been with each other. I right. mean, so it, yeah, so it and is. And they're not known for being super friendly. No, no, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> but I will tell you this. And you, you look at this shirt again. Uh -huh. So this is actually Rowdy's last ride. Okay. That is the very last ride mm -hmm. that he done. And I want to, I want you to, I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but there's a lot of safety equipment that mm -hmm. bull riders wear today. I mean, when, when I was younger, I can remember when oh, yeah. I started seeing bull riders wearing safety equipment. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, wow, that's a yeah. pretty great yeah. idea. But, but you said his vest, that's a protective vest, mm -hmm. a helmet, yeah. the whole thing. It yeah. was 
Yeah, he. It's, I mean, he, gear. Yeah, he, we gave him the right gear, and he was he was protected. Yeah, um, just a freak accident. But right. you know, so anyway. So yeah, but, so yeah, this was his last. That ride. was his last ride. And of course, this is his profile picture from his headshot from um, the rodeo team at OSU. Right. But um, it. it I, I wear it, I wear it with great pride. Absolutely. He he was again he was something special, mm -hmm. and uh, I could sit here and talk to you all day long. I could tell you stories. Um, <laughs> And I and I could even tell you some things that ha that happened up up until the to, till his passing, that um, it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. sad to say, but it was meant to be. Yeah. When it, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Right. And there were several events that happened that, had we known, we could have we could have knew this was happening. This was this was it was his time. Mm -hmm. It was his time. Right. So. But anyway, it's uh, but yeah, I could like I said, I could sit here and tell you tell you tons of stories and, and things, but I just I just encourage everybody to come out because I'm telling you right now, you will not have a better time in Duncan this weekend. Absolutely. I mean, there's just so, so much to do. So at um, let's see, you said uh was it a what time are the people at Crutcher's from eleven to twelve? From eleven to twelve, yep. you can get autographs from the bullfighters and the former uh World champion World bull rider, champion bull rider. Mm -hmm. and then at one o'clock. Yeah, at one o'clock will be the meet and greet with Bullet, and at the fairgrounds and Pistol Pete. I don't know for sure what time Pistol Pete's going to be there, but he okay. will be at he the will rodeo. Be there. He will okay, be there. he's coming to yeah. the rodeo, guys. I so. think he'll probably be there about one thirty. He's um, hard to miss. Yeah, you can't too. miss him. I mean, can't I don't mean this rudely, but he kind of has a big head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then the bull riding starts at two, and that's when also the Vendor booths will be set up and um, all of that stuff, as well as the silent and auction. And the silent auction. Yep. Is there a concession? There is a concession stand. Rowdy's mom is taking care of that. Um, don't know if you've ever had homemade empanadas. Ooh. There you go. That's what the specialty is going to be. That sounds like that was <laughs> That was Rowdy's favorite meal. There so you empanadas, go. beans, and rice. That's what will be at the end oh. of in the it won't be a traditional concession that stand. sounds great so yeah. you can get advanced tickets five dollars at crutchers here in town or in lawton seven dollars at the gate which is still a super reasonable super cheap yeah you won't go to a rodeo and pay five dollars to get into a rodeo yeah. yeah you won't even go to a rodeo and pay seven dollars to get into a rodeo. <laughs> right yeah but like so. i said i wanted to make it affordable for the family because you know i mean if you've got five or six people you charge ten dollars a piece that's a chunk of money yes i would rather have a crowd there and make it affordable where they can come and enjoy it. Absolutely. That's exactly so. right. Well, as I said before, we are sorry that the White Side Museum couldn't be here today, but I'm telling you, I could not have planned this episode of Trail Talk any better. I mean, this was what was supposed to sure. happen today. So um, I want to thank Lori Belcher from the Simmons Center for coming and talking to us about all the cool things going on there. And Gerald, I just want to thank you for dropping everything and oh, coming up here. And wow, I just, this was, this is great. And I, I just really hope that this is just a blow your mind success I do too. this weekend. I do too. Yeah. And I just can't, I can't wait to hear uh, what's next. Okay. Do you guys have other events planned through the year? Not as of right now, Okay. but I will tell you this. Um, I had, I had a lady contact me today and she said, Oh, this is the first annual but next year at the second annual she said what if we put a bull riding on and put a 5k in with it and do a 5k so we might might have the first now annual talking, first annual rowdy swanson 5k next year who now knows now you're talking we'll this is a good time of year to have a 5k Absolutely. the mornings are cool yep and that's a whole another crowd uh, another whole crowd of people yep. That you could um, tap into sure. there. So wow, that's yeah. a smart idea. There's a lot of things that a lot of things I think might be coming. And uh -huh. like I said, it takes a lot of people to do it. And that's yeah. what it, when people come to me, I'm like, hey, whatever we can do, let's do it. That's exactly right. So. That's awesome. Well, whenever we sign off, we say happy trails. So are you ready? I'm ready. Thanks a lot, Gerald. I'm glad you came today. Thank let's... you. Happy, happy trails. Happy trails. And go folks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>